This is the Without Losing Your Cool podcast. We have entrepreneurs, climate changers, entertainers, and survivors turned thrivers. You do not want to miss a thing. Okay, Jagger, I just want to say thank you so much for being here with me today and certainly with my audience, the Without Losing Your Cool um, podcast audience. I want to dive right into the awesomeness that is you and the work that you are doing. Some people probably know you as a chef. Other people will know you as an author. I know you as an incredible human being and philanthropic being that is doing fantastic work in the food insecurity um, realm of our society. So thank you for taking time out and hanging out with us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, thank you. And first and foremost, thanks for offering such a great platform to share incredible messages, you know, because you just never want to lose your cool um, you know, <laughs> talking about what you do all the time. But it's pretty cool. So uh, yeah. in, in, in the inter that introduction, you know, we face this day and age, uh, the uncertainties of, of uh, financial situations for all of us, because some people, some of us are tending to making sure that we have a roof over our heads and then we supplement our income based on what we put in our stomachs or how the affordability of it too. And where yeah. I'm getting at with that is, is, you know, it's hard to maintain a healthy balance. And of course, the most important thing is clothing, shelter, and food. Well, this day and age here, in at least in Toronto, uh, it's a very expensive place to to live. And what I've noticed is a lot of people are currently looking for other ways and means to shop uh, because, you know, food's very expensive, and especially healthy food. So expensive. And with the influx of yeah, well, you know, there's such an influx now, especially for those yeah. that can't afford even healthier or food, they go to these food banks. Yeah. And there are now lineups of food banks around the blocks and it's becoming worse in the pandemic. It's just, a, it's a matter of what scarcity is, is coming around for food for that, that, that they can attain to feed their families. So yeah, I've made my wild. mission. Yeah, it is wild. It really is. And no one can afford wild food anymore. Anyway, anyway it's all processed. <laughs> it is processed. You know what? And it's interesting that you say that about food banks, because for my listeners who aren't in the Toronto area um, where we are, both of us live, I was stunned. I was driving a few weeks back and it was a rainy day and I'm at Avenue Road in St. Clair and there's a food bank that is opened on the corner there of um, DuPont. And I, first off, I, to my shame, I was stunned to know that there was a few food bank in this particular part of the city, but that the line, as you said, was around the block and it was raining and my heart just sunk because to your point, food is scarce. And if it's not scarce, it's so dear, the price of food. Can you, can you talk to that? And um, let's go back a little bit and, and talk about your your organization first. Let's. Why don't you share with my listeners what it is you do outside of being, obviously, a very talented chef. Very nice of you. Thank you. Uh, you know, as a chef, um, prior to being a chef, when I lived in the Hillcrest area, which is St. Clair and Bathurst, I was a single father raising my daughter. And as a child, I got to see what it was like to have an empty fridge. As my mother was never really around, my father was deceased. And I was always relying on my neighbor's five different cereal boxes on the weekend and all his toys and his color TV to, to really have that warm family feeling in the mornings. But there was a day that when I was raising my daughter where as a single father, I had a Friday night off. I went out and I came back and I heard, you know, first thing in the morning, I think it was like six or seven in the morning. And I was like, really? Early. I was like, I've only slept for a few hours. I wonder what these little giggling girls are doing downstairs and why are they here? Because my daughter was supposed to have a sleepover at her friend's house. Right. Long story short, it ends up that my daughter came to me and said that there was no food in the fridge for her, her friend and all her siblings. So they brought them over to our house. Yeah. And that opened up a lot of um, perspective to why, how can someone not have at this day and age food in their fridge, especially in the area that we were living in, because, mm. you know, some people can't afford better places and some people just, you know, might also afford to live in condos or, or apartments or rooms in a house. But the idea is, is how is food not available? Well, yeah. after doing my due diligence, I started saying that things have to change. 
And at that time, I kind of made the stand up by saying, I, I really should just change my career to professionally understand the 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 system of a, of a formal kitchen and become, instead of that home chef, into a, a, a career of it. So I hung up my previous career and I went into culinary school. And then from there, I just instantly transpired to going to my daughter's school, to community, and said, how can I assist with meals? Wow. So it started with the ap- afternoon programs. It started with the after-school sports events. And I just found ways to find food and or ask my restaurateurs and stuff to say, hey, I need some help. Supply me. That transpired, that evolved and bloomed into the creativity of saying, well, I found out my friends had a lot of food left over. Uh, I should be able to do something with it. And after uh, quite some time, I started doing little pop-ups throughout the city where on the streets where people can obtain a healthy meal uh, that was created by another kitchen or such uh, that we gave out. And then as that progressed and popularity moved forward, uh, my own first big kitchen I really started having a lot of food waste myself. And I wanted to address that by saying I could reconstitute or reuse it and put it back into meals, which I did, which we did. And that's where Feed It Forward is my company's name. FeedItForward.ca started evolving itself into the idea of food rescue, taking all the food that's in masses and utilizing it and putting it back onto the tables of people that uh, wanted to have a healthier meal. Uh, Through that, I found wow. a better idea and saying, why don't I just find a, create a fixed area where people can come to me rather than me going looking for them. And that's where I created the first pay what you can free uh, restaurant ever called the soup bar. And that hurt, that literally hit the world market. Uh, and I should say the media. And uh, that's when everything started to bloom, which we can talk about for more. Um, you okay. know, I want There was yeah, so much, there's so you. much. <laughs> There's so much juicy goodness in there. I want to, okay. So first I want to roll it back because you said something quite early on and when you were speaking about sco- food insecurity at school with your daughter, which mm-hmm. you, 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 just, you recognized, would you, would you know, um, that like a stat on that? Because I know for me personally, you know, when I was going to school, we didn't know about food insecurity and kids that maybe had smaller lunches. Like, you you know, as a kid, you're not putting pieces together, right? And Mm -hmm. so often teachers nowadays are overwhelmed in just their job and and that role and all that they have to do all day long. So what, what made you take that on? Like, what was there sort of like a number that you, you knew of, or how did that, how did that piece of that puzzle come into play for you? Great because question. it's a very real problem and issue, and it's not talked about, in my opinion, nearly enough. You, and thank you for yeah opening this little can of worms. You know, yeah. I, I really found myself as a caterer. I opened up my first catering company in the beginning, and I had my first main event for Oktoberfest. I was so excited. Uh, I was going to do a pop-up kitchen in a, in a farm field for Oktoberfest, and I was going to feed a few thousand people. Well, on the way to that journey, uh, one of our trailers blew a tire and we couldn't replace it in time. So we missed our lunch service at the Oktoberfest, which means, yeah. uh, of course, a few, maybe a thousand meals were not served. When we finally arrived there to set up camp, it started to pour rain. And so basically Oktoberfest outdoors in the farmland just shut right down into a little tent where I wasn't yeah. already situated. So that left me with an abundance of food. And I said, what am I going to do with this? So at Trinity Bellwoods, right. back in the day for the inception of Feed It Forward, I did a pop-up tent or a pop-up tables with a bunch of friend volunteers. And we started serving this leftover food that I reheated and, or it wasn't even cooked at that time, but we, we cooked up and then we heated or had it heated, transported and served at this location. And I noticed the drones of people, of women and children coming out saying, oh my God, we you like this is the best thing ever a free meal like it's really unheard of and that's when my eyes opened up by saying how many single families that i can relate to and people that came through saying we didn't know where our next meal was coming from because you know no matter what area you live in or how your standards are a person could be wearing as i would say a pair of prada shoes but underneath them could still have holes in the soles so it's a matter of you know, you can look good, but on the inside, how great are we feeling? Right. And for the children's aspect, you know, it's 
A healthy stomach is a healthy mind. And Agreed. 100%. And children should not be worrying about where their next meal comes from. And the statistics that were that came about was one in seven families are living with food insecurities across Canada, and at least one in four children in every house in the in the households are have missed a meal or are looking for their next meal. So it's kind of a a scary scary statistic thinking that our biggest land here that develops most of the food for the world. And I'll give you this as an yeah. example. 58% of food that's manufactured here in Canada alone, that's from farming, that's from manufacturing, whatever it be, is destroyed right. before it even gets to market. Now, imagine 58% looking at your plate Wait, and just why? taking a little more than half and throwing it out because we are so complacent. Everything has to be picture perfect. Now, yes. where, I, where, yeah, where I'm going with yeah. that is 58% can feed world hunger times how much is it 58 percent 58 percent can will uh, world hunger times four every annually it's either three or four wow. annually all of our food waste can feed world hunger times almost three or four times now so how do we stop that, it well, well this is just it imagine every person being fed on planet earth for four months with our food waste that's that is the statistics so how do we stop it well this is where feeded ford came in so i i I was the hooligan that challenged all these big pharma, big companies saying, what do you do with your food waste? So yeah. instead of walking around with signs in front of their businesses and saying, stop food waste, this, that, you know, picketing their, their places and being that little rebel, I chose a different path. I put a suit on for the front door and I put a t-shirt on the back door. So I start analyzing nice. people's, uh, how much waste is edible waste is coming out of their system and or how much they're willing to volunteer through the front door of how much information they're throwing out. Well, strategically, I, then I started making myself associated with some great partners and I can say this publicly, which is amazing, which would be Starbucks, Whole Foods, Shoppers Drug Mart and such. And I chose these companies to say, listen, we can lead by example back in 2017, yeah. uh, how we can utilize your food and products. They listened. They said, wait, 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 you're actually going to pick up our garbage and help us save on that and repurpose it? Well, that's interesting. Let's watch that model happen. Well, that model definitely happened. And now there's so many visionary companies. All these companies have their vision sets on how to eliminate their food waste. And I still, to this day, from 2017, uh, utilize these companies to give us and we relocate their food continuously. And now I'll give you an example. Whole Foods okay, yeah. has a three. Whole, Whole Foods has a product, and three days prior to their product coming up to the optimal freshness date, meaning it doesn't look perfect anymore, okay. that they'll destroy it. Now, I'll give an example. If you were to buy a, a bag of oranges, or if there's a bag of oranges in a grocery store, and it's by weight, so that's a four pound bag, right. and all of a sudden one of those oranges go amiss, they have to destroy the whole bag. They can't take the one orange out and sell it for under four pounds and saying this is what it is for the, for the price. It's just the agreement that this world lives in. So I say, you know what? I'm going to come take all those bags that you're thinking you're throwing out. I'll take the orange out and I will give out each and every orange singular to, to whoever deserves it. And that trend kept on. Starbucks was amazing because Starbucks yeah. had this Ethiopian blend uh, yes. coffee that and these little packages were $22 each. And it was pretty interesting because they said, you know, our Christmas blend, we're not going to sell it this year, but we have like 80,000 packages in Iowa. Could you do something with it? And this is the inception when Starbucks started making their transition into their um, uh, food recovery program. And I said, yeah, ship it up to me and I'll give everyone in Toronto that could never afford your product. I, I, or it wasn't Christmas, it was a spring gift, a spring gift. And that's where things bloomed. So now all these great companies continuously work by donating their food and uh, it's all, we don't, we don't have to look back at it anymore, but okay. it's the ones but, that, yeah, it's, go ahead. You, I'll let you talk. You are one guy. You mm. are, you are doing this with Whole Foods. You're doing this with Starbucks. You're doing this with Shoppers Drug Mart. Break that, like, lit, I, my, I'm trying to not like have my mouth hang open here I'll... because you know i i don't know if you know this about me but i own a marina and we're seasonal and we have a little snack shack and we sell poutine and we sell subs and obviously our ice cream never goes to waste we never ever ever have to give away our ice cream but i'm listening to you talk about 
food waste and, and, and with my marina on such a small scale, how do you, one guy, these are behemoth companies. Like we're not talking Chantilly's place. You're going and collecting, you know, food that I'm not able to sell and it's about to expire. We're talking about massive entities with huge stock. How are you, one human being, managing recovering their food from going into the waste? I, I'm, I'm, I, okay, I know this. thank you. I'll bring myself a little back down to earth here. <laughs> um, so from the from from the earth aspect of things. So I also challenged, let, let alone these big companies, but I also challenged all the food sectors. So Feed It Forward basically built an empire by stating that I'm going to start from the seed to feed, which means from the ground up from our farms. So I reached out. We had a, an associated farm that said, listen, it's called Greenwood Farms. We have a we have 200 acres of organic farming that you can have and utilize to grow your own and to give it out and to monitor and maintain the integrity of how much food waste comes from it. I started with that. Then I went into the logistics to see how logistics uh, products and, and produce can be destroyed or how it can be utilized. And then we went into warehousing, which we put our name on. So another feed afford warehousing aspect. And then from the warehousing, when it went into distribution, into their system of food manufacturing, to our kitchens, to the grocery store concept. So it just evolved and it just went into a bigger blue, a plume or what do you call it? A, a big cloud right. of food waste. And I challenged it. So yes, big companies, little companies, farming, everyone was at risk here. Right. Because I was going to expose them with their with their being socially responsible, and this is the way it is. I gave it. I made proposals to them as a one man team. Um, I chose that my vision should not be interrupted. What that means is, I decided to register as a federal non for profit profit, and that I think was uh, two thousand. The inception of that was two thousand eighteen. So I wanted to start challenging people, uh, and through that. I decided not to take any funding. I decided to solely run my companies on volunteers and I wanted to show how companies can be ran through community. And where that means is when grants are given to nonprofits, NGOs or uh, charities, the grant money runs out sooner or later, or you always have to chase that money. And yeah. the problem with that is when and the money runs out- And you're also beholden to stops. that money, right? You're also beholden to those grants. And where I'm getting with that, you're <laughs> controlled, you're yes. governed. Yeah. So as the hooligan that wants to make a difference and rattle some cages, I don't want some big person over me breathing on me saying you can't and cannot do this. So I'm going, well, I'm going to get, sh excuse me, stuff done. You can say shit and, here. Uh, we, say, so they, we talk about that here. Oh man, did I get shit done? I was holding people just by the throats by saying, what are you doing? But I love it. That it all worked out and it's still working because from there, as a one man team, still as a one man team, I have a couple of board of directors uh, that, that listen to my ideas. And unfortunately they like to say no at certain things because it's all out of pocket. So right. uh, whatever I have invested in, whatever, all the programs, I'm a social enterprise. So my catering pays for the operations through feed it forward. Mm -hmm. And it's still to this date because I'm not at the point where I feel comfortable where I, all my programs could be replicated. And what that means when I'm trying to explain that is, I want to build everything. I want to write the book of it. So when people ask me, as they do commonly, or commonly about my programs, I want them to replicate it with no proprietorship. So I want able. I want. I want everyone to learn by my mistakes, which are my successions. Right. And I want people to understand that you know this is how it was done. And if you can evolve and think of something that could be better or added to it, go for it. I'll. Sh I'll. I'll give you the catalyst. I'll show you how it's done. But other than that, uh, no one's really jumped on except for the idea of, well, how do you do it? You need all this money. You need all these right. volunteers. You need this. And I'm going, it's a simple little pro procedure. And that's where I came up with the digital age. Okay. I created a free food sharing app for the world to utilize. Free food, share food, or receive food and without proprietorship. And that's where I'm at today. So how does that it work? How, how does this app work? I'm going to guess... It's a way break. I'll let you tell me. I, I have so an I'll idea how I think it would work. So as I see you on this camera, or as you see me right now, you take a screenshot of it. 
picturing that I'm a piece of food, okay? And then you would upload it like Uber, uh, showing on a mapping system where the food's available and who's giving it and at what time and where concept. So I said, okay, well, how would this work for people? Well, if you had a big bowl of pasta and you had two little plates left over, why would you not want to share it with someone in your building or right. at your campus or wherever someone might be wanting to have that meal? Or you could just have a beacon to all your friends and everybody knows where your hot meal is at. But that wasn't enough because then I was thinking about the countries and I was thinking about the the orchards or the, the, the plantations. I'm going, what about mangoes and avocados and as an expat or someone who's traveling or a farmer says, I'm not, I don't, I, I'm not going to pick everything off these or right. I have a couple of trees in front of my house. Why don't you, they take a picture of it, it uploads, it shows you where and when that tree is available to be harvested and it gives everyone the option to utilize it. Um, that's enough. That was one of their concepts that I, that I did do in uh, Central America and such, but uh, I moved, I moved my, this free food sharing up to another direction. And when I found out, well, when we went to war, I'm not Ukrainian, but when Ukraine went to war, um, I found that I found out that a lot of people are, so many people were displaced and I couldn't sit on the sidelines by watching, uh, the drones of people in despair. So I immediately put a team together to maintain the integrity here in Canada. Uh, I, I managed to put a couple teams together in Poland to first test the waters to see how things are because, of course, of what, I, what I'm what i jeopardizing. Right. And I started working with World Central Kitchen and working in their facility. And I was like, I was a little gassed because I was going, man, you guys like have hundreds of millions of dollars in operations, but you're... I felt that you guys weren't going too deep or deep enough uh, into the action or restricted to going into the action. So I chose to go cross border for the first time. And of course I was geared up and fully Kevlar and I was, I was militant on all, all of my safety. But yes. when I got there, I started reconnecting with some friends. In fact, celloists and people that played at my parties as a caterer here in Toronto are now fighting a war protecting their homeland in, in Ukraine. So when I got to connect with them, uh, these medics were amazing that I just wanted to say, how can I help? So we utilized the app by saying, I'm going to take over a couple of restaurants and bakeries. We're going to produce food and we're going to ship it out into the trenches. And when we got into the trenches, our little, uh, my app was a little beacon, like a bat signal to all. And it showed you where and what exactly where that meal is going to be for you waiting. So it was a kind of a win-win scenario, especially for those that were traveling all the way through the country to to get out of the out of the uh, country. They were able to share for all the newcomers or newly arrivals through their towns and townships in Ukraine uh, and through Poland, where uh, they can find food through the app. Uh, that was interesting. So technology has taken me to a different level. I, I created it. I wrote the idea, and it was developed, but it's still in the open phase because. It, I haven't shared it to the world really technically. And it's a, something that the world needs to, to really grasp. It's like we can share food and not make food a privilege. And without losing your cool, we've got your gift giving needs covered. Whether it's a holiday gift, if it's a support gift, if it's a little extra love that somebody in your life needs gift, or a parent who needs a little more guidance, advice, and the knowing that they are not alone out there in their parenting journey, we have got you covered. If you know somebody who is deepening their relationship to self, grab them the self-love bundle. It includes the Loving Yourself Without Losing Your Cool book, Loving Yourself journal that accompanies the book, and Love Notes for Adults. If you have somebody in your life who's expecting or has a little from zero to 10, then the Raising Kids Bundle is the perfect gift set for them. It comes with the Raising Your Kids Without Losing Your Cool and Love Notes for Littles. If you have a parent in your inner circle who is heading into tween and teendom, boy, have we got the gift set for you. Parenting Your Teens Without Losing Your Cool comes with Love Notes for Tweens or Teens. You get to choose. All of this is available for you at ChantelBisson.com. If you're shopping ChantelBisson.com for the very first time, don't forget to add yourself to the newsletter to claim your shopping discount code. Go now. Well, I love that we can share food and not make food of privilege because really 
it is it is a form of currency and it does create a glaring reality of socioeconomic standing. You know what I mean? Like I, I, again, going back to my childhood, my mom was a single mom. My dad, you know, didn't give us money when he wasn't around. So, you know, we were very much paycheck to paycheck in my household. And I had no idea that, you know, Thursdays when I was making, you know, mustard ketchup relish sandwiches, because that was all that was left. I actually thought it was like, I'm having a hot dog without a hot dog. I didn't know that we were poor. I didn't know that we had food insecurity. I do now as an adult, but it's fascinating when you think about it, you know, you, you, with your background being a chef and travel and stuff like that, you know, you go out when you travel, you go to restaurants and you don't really, we don't really think about, well, what happens after and that when we travel and we go to these different countries, certainly not the Ukraine, which is currently in war, but there really is that discrepancy, right? Where food is going into this abyss, trash, and yet there are people literally that can't feed the babies. Um, what I wanted to, I wanted to actually go back a little bit and ask you within the food app, the sharing app, have, has that progressed? Is that something that you are utilizing here in Toronto? Is that something that somebody who's listening right now, who may be um, suffering from food insecurity, is that something that they can be a part of here? Um, how, how, how can we help anybody who might be listening right now? Yeah, anyone can download the app and utilize it. How often it's being used is based on the marketing peer-to-peer and conversation like that. So this is where I fell short by saying I haven't launched it to the world marketing-wise. Right. As a one-man show, I don't know much about. I know how to create innovative ideas on certain things, but I don't know how to execute the the, the completion of sharing that message. And I think platforms like this is where I this is what I basically love. Well, but, you're also yeah one man and my god you're doing a lot like so like you are doing a lot i i I mean i'm blown away i was blown away when i read your bio and watching you and on social media but now listening to actually how deep into this you are um it's phenomenal and i i thank you let's go let's let's go a little further so i'll bring you back to the idea as we were having a conversation about the food bank that's on in here in toronto on avenue uh, and DuPont, which is a very wealthy area, yeah. and how, how it's a pocket for those that are um, that are, are thriving and, 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 and that are in, in need of food security. Well, the gentlemen that were direct that direct that program right now started in Feed of Ford, and that's where I, my heart blew up because it was just really nice to see how one can learn the dynamics and take it on themselves to move forward into a uh, into a parish where. It, they're able to share that message and then that's funded. So having the food bank, I always wanted to say, oh, I'd love to have my own food bank, but I took it at a different level. I And as you were saying, you know, your parents, you know, the, I found a bridge between par, uh, paychecks because a lot of people are, you know, b- struggling to, to put food on their tables through paycheck to paycheck. So I created a pay what you can free grocery store. I love and that. And this is where I've taken all my all my providers and I now found a retail space that I could afford and I made a mini, well, it's a, it's a grocery store. So where we provide hot meals, prepared meals, all the fresh organic produce, anything you would see if you were to walk into a Whole Foods, Starbucks or Shoppers Drug Mart. Wow. And basically uh, the idea of that is to showcase how we can utilize the best before concept dates on products because Let's bring this education component to everyone who could be watching right now and understanding the best before date is a marketing date for others to say that I can't guarantee the product inside because this is what something could change at that time. I can't guarantee the flavor profiles or the coloring. Okay, so you must destroy this to go buy another one. Okay, so if you're in your fridge or in your cupboards and that that hot. That sunscreen, you know, is almost yeah. finished, but it's not. You might want to throw it away or something that's in, you know, that just says it's not good enough. Well, I hate it, those it dates. Good enough. <laughs> it is good enough. And it is. Them, there's no regulation. There's no laws. There's no regulations. There's no big boy uh, 
big brother in the sky saying you can you have to put that there because you're going to hurt people now so one thing I, that best before dates something? are good for yes yeah. I was, I, I can't, I, i'm gonna jump in here because sorry my menopause brain stuff comes in and then it goes out and then i'll be mad that i didn't ask you so now we might get in shit for this so listeners don't get your knickers in a knot but Best before dates. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Best before dates are, is there not an, and this is just me, is there not an element of them that is like a, a manufacturer's cover your ass date or a Steve Jobs um, forced consumerism date? You know what I mean? Like really, I, I get it. Some stuff could, meats and whatnot, raw products could potentially make Best you- Best before, oh, time out. <laughs> Best before, not expiry. Okay. Okay. So break we're down the best before we're date. All going to, we're all going to expire sometime. <laughs> it's the best before. It's the imperfect of things. Look, I'm imperfect. Okay. That yeah. doesn't mean you still don't want to be hanging around me. All right. So if it's the best before date, that means you have, please go out and buy another one. Now, right. best before dates are only good really that we all should follow is infant food, baby food. We don't Understood. need to mess around with baby food because what happens when I, when we have vitamins and when we have, um, you know, active ingredients and in certain things, they deplete. So that's what they're guaranteeing saying something elements might not be as strong like vitamins or whatever. So they lose their as potency. a child, touche, as a child, they have no control of e elaborating or telling us this right so we don't want to starve them from th those nutrients that they so deserve so i say screw it don't mess with it leave that of all things but the old sniff and test uh, you know chicken it's not going to be expired it's going to be best before because the producer the 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 butcher or the grocery store or the whoever it's going to provide is going to give it to you to want to make sure you have the best of everything Got right it. Some of them, some of them will move those dates around too, because they'll just open up the package and and smell it, and it's still and smells, repackage you know, okay, it, we'll, and we'll put another package sticker on there, or we'll add some food coloring to it. Yes. There's nothing wrong with saying that you can't add food coloring to things just to make it. Well, you know, there's so many different tricks of the trade. But long story short, to the answer of all this, best before dates necessarily don't have to be followed by. Um, it's always the taste. Yes. If you have something that's opened and those crackers are stale, I get yes. it, but yes. if it's sealed and it still has air in it, and it's, it's perfect. Hey, give it a try. That's what I, I mean, do. Look at these cans. Look at these cans sitting in bomb shelters. Still people thinking they're going to still live off of it after 20 years. Right. I'm going to pull out a can of beans. I'm going to live that in a, in my little nuclear, whatever, you know, I'm just going to smart. Under whatever. the Denver airport. They have a lot of that under the Denver airport. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but I digress. I digress. No, see, I love that. It, it's important that we understand these things because I think that's where a lot of waste happens. You know, when you buy something, let's say you're, you know, for me specifically, we're having a big family dinner and, you know, we're making the recipe and we buy a little extra just in case we don't have the measurements correct. And then you're not making that dish again. You know, it's not a daily dish that you're cooking. So it sits in your pantry. And, you know, I'm infamous for like, I'll look at something to your point, if it's sealed, if it's in a can, if it's in a jar and the seal hasn't been broken, I'll, I've been known to put stuff that's a year old into a pot of something that I'm going to boil. Do you know? Um, so I want to really get into the nitty gritty here about salvaging food waste. Like, how can I, apart from using my year old cans... Um, of goods, how can I make a difference? How can I do my part to reduce food waste? Food waste. I'm having you on my podcast. Uh, all right. Well, this is really great because now you've become, now we're, we're going to be introducing how to become a food rescue hero. A lot of, you know, we all believe in our heroes. We all yeah. believe in these heroes being, you know, like, Now we know what a hero is, right? But <laughs> I love that. Those food rescue heroes don't have capes. And these people that we need to to shine on is the ones that can eliminate food waste starting in their own homes. 
the idea is what you need to go back to the old school, shop for what you need to feed your family for the week or create those dishes. So recipe bases, you know, the old school where Nona or whoever went out to the market, bought what they need to make that big pot. So whatever it's going to be for the, the feed you the next couple of days is important. Now, right. when you start taking, peeling away the layers of the lettuce and, and the, the carrots that you're leaving in the fridge and things that are starting to wilt, well, what do you do with it? Well, yeah. That's where we come in creativity. You can chop, blend, and put anything in its place in a freezer or even drink it. You know, the, the sweeter, the, the better, then you can make that into beverages or you can just make healthier soups, stews, and chilies with it. And you can always yeah. just take the ends and bits and freeze it and put it in that freezer. That freezer is the next freshest thing you've ever met. Frozen's the next fresh. <laughs> okay, can I ask you this? Um, just to help us out at home, is it important, for example, if you are buying fresh vegetables, let's just use beans as an example, should you put them frozen in their raw state or is there like, do you blanch them? Is there some sort of preservation that you should be doing so that when you finally pull it out again in a month or two months, you're going to have the best quality that you can have from, you know, preserving your own stuff at home? Really valid question. So to condense the, the nutrients and what I would say, you, I could be quoted on it, I would cook everything into its place at that time and then freeze it, right? So you take it what's for fresh or for what's wilting, you create that meal and then you freeze that if it be, a, like I said, soup, stew, okay. or chili. And then it's ready to go. Then you don't have to go through what each little item might've got. One might've got a freezer burned or right. you know the elements of air. That way, at least you know you compacted all your products and you made something delicious out of it, and it's retained in there and that wholesome. And then that's what you you're sharing from at that at that time, rather than going okay. through the whole system that you've already created. Got so it. cook it all off, make something delicious, and if not, you know, yes, you can freeze the items, but nobody should be keeping anything that long in their freezer because we're not we're not hoarders. If you have something in the Porter. freezer, it means you just don't want, it doesn't mean you don't want anything going a waste in a week later. Because if it sits okay. in your fridge, it's going to go to waste. Right. But if you freeze it and say, oh, you know what? I can use this in a shake or whatever it is next week. Then you pull it out. You know, even those frozen berries become your ice cubes. Right. Before they go amiss. Right. So stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. No, I, I um, <laughs> Thanks. Sometimes I sometimes I think of good things from time to time. But uh, for me, my my big thing that I'm really focusing on right now personally is just to ensure that I am being a responsible human being. Like I had a um, Dax da Silva on, and he right now is really really working on um, overfishing and and specifically in Europe. And what I realized is that, you know, it can be overwhelming as one person, here you are one person doing all this incredible work, but it can be overwhelming because there's so, we're being pulled in so many directions as a society of ways that to make impact, to reduce our impact, to be a, be a hero, to be a help, um, that sometimes I know for me personally, it can feel overwhelming of like, am I doing enough? Oh shit, I'm not. And therefore, I think some of us get analysis paralysis. We just then decide to do nothing. So what are some practical tips that you can give, you know, not somebody who is doing incredible things like having a grocery store where people can come and, and purchase food that is still very much good to eat. But what are things that we can do, like the average home owner who are, you know, not even homeowner, but person in society who's going to the grocery store, um, do to ensure that we are consciously buying and consuming in a way that will limit food waste or, or decrease our food waste. What kind of tips All right. can you give tip, us? Tip number one, we've, we've, we addressed it. So remember yeah. 58% of all food that's manufactured destroyed before it gets to market. That also keeps Crazy. in mind of what you buy at your grocery store and what you put into your fridge, because we're all guilty. We're all guilty of throwing things out in that fridge. 100%. And if you can look at what you're throwing out, and give yourself the task of saying, how could I have stopped myself from doing that? And there's two ways about it. One's okay. the freezer, and okay. two is stop overspending. Because 
58 and the, the, I'm using the 58 percent because imagine your paychecks based on buying food for your family yeah okay I want you to take 58 percent of that food just look at that number 58 percent of that food that you spent on your family or the food that's sitting in your fridge because it looks glamorous when it's full for everybody to look at but at the end of the week what are you throwing out that's mm -hmm. hard cash that is the hours that you've spent working to put that paycheck into your pocket, to put the yeah. food in your sh shopping time to, and cooking time to put that into your fridge, into your stomachs that you're wasting. So yeah. the only waste that should be happening is you after your nice, healthy meal somewhere else, not in, from the growth, not in from your fridge. Right. Well, right? even when um, I eat out, I, I, you know, I take. I'm at the toilet. Sorry. The toilet. The <laughs> toilet. Ah, yeah. <laughs> one I, way in, one, one way, way out. One way in, one way out. That's it. You're Not right. the garbage, okay? Not the garbage. No, you know, when I go out, I, you know, I now I've started to, you know, share, share an appetizer, share an entree, and you know, because there is that sort of tendency, certainly, in Western civilization and culture which I want to talk to you because you've traveled all over the world and I want to ask you about food differences in other parts of the world. But there is that tendency to, like you said earlier, hoard. Hoarding. And we saw it. We saw it actually play out in real time when, when, you know, the virus first came in and entered North America. You know, we laughed. I laughed because I had friends who are Italian and they were showing us videos of people in Italy, like hoarding and running through the grocery stores and fighting each other for, for items. And I thought, Oh my God, this is out of control. This has never happened here. And then flash forward three months later, we as North Americans were doing the exact same thing. So, you know, since that time, I've really, you know, I don't need to use 6,000 pieces of toilet paper. I can use two. I don't need to use five pieces of paper towel to clean that up. I can use one. And if I need another, then I'll get another. But it's it's interesting how situations in life condition us to make change. So what would you say from all your travels is the biggest difference between us here in North America compared to, I don't know, where else okay. you've been where you find that this things is aren't wasteful? This is a great segue. So I'll start as a much younger age where I started tuning into my philanthropic work. Okay. You know, um, I was raised in Florida okay. and I lived through two hurricanes, Hurricane Andrew and Hurricane Hugo. And through at least when I got shipwrecked on one as a, I was a commercial fisherman. So I know all about the yeah. fisheries. I all know, I, I know all about waste in the ocean, yeah. but I also understand what it takes to lose your community to a violent storm. And Mother Nature just has its own path. So I stood, I, I stood up and st at a young age, and I really chose to be there forefront for my community. And I was the kid that was handing out waters and provisions to the to the people that drove through or came through, having no roofs over their heads anymore, because they were oh, completely destroyed or flooded. Yeah. So I understood that deliverance of saying how important food and community is. So countries working together and food waste. Well, when there's a tragedy of mother, I mother nature, it takes away those resources, logistically, uh, growth, manufacturing and such. And um, that was the, the leading point to understand when I went to other countries, and I'll give you Asia, for instance, or yeah, you know, I can give you any country. Yeah. And I've been to quite a few of them. I think where I'm almost over at 40 something countries that I've been to. Uh, I everyone had to be down for chooses... 32, but <laughs> that was that has been updated. That has been updated in the past year. I've traveled to quite a few countries in the past year. Wow. Or, a year and a half. Two years. Wow, it's two years. Wow. Party. But long story short, the uh or we're gonna do a short story long. People shop for what they need. Um right. The ones that go to restaurants, for instance, shouldn't leave anything on their plate, or that means there's either the chef's shit and there's too much food left over, or you went in there hungry, thinking you're hungry, but you're not, or you know, or you just don't want, or you think you're too posh to like to take food home with you. Well, yeah. I'll tell you something. There's nothing wrong with taking what you haven't touched and putting it into a little takeout container and handing it off to someone on the street. I'll tell you that for a fact. But that's what, that's, anyways. That's good. 
Yeah. There's an idea. If you're where... too cool to take your food home from a restaurant, Jagger says, yeah. take it and give it to somebody that you pass on your way home who is homeless and yeah. in need for that food. I love that. Or, or put it on that. the app. Or put it on the app saying, I have a meal waiting for you at this location. Um, you know. Okay, what is that I mean, app? Because we've talked about it now a few times. I invite everyone to understand everything I do is feed it forward. Feed it's it called forward. Feed It Forward. My brand is Feed It Forward. Feed it forward.ca is my website. I'll tell you all about it and all the operations that we have. Is it up to date? It's not up to date in the past, I think, almost year because we've surpassed, I think, 2 million meals that we've served for free uh, since the inception of 2018 of uh, for Feed It Forward. Um, the amount of emissions we saved from the atmosphere, the the idea of how much food we saved from the landfills, it, it's brilliant because it's community working together. I want to um, say but, uh, that a million meals was impressive. Two yeah. is outstanding. And I have, two million is, is unbelievable. But then it also kind of makes me sad that there's that much need and that so Touché. many of us live oblivious, obliviously to this need. You know, you know, that's so well said because the way I wanted to humble people by saying that if I had zero meals served, that means I'm in really good business. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, things are changing. Like, look at Italy and France. They've made it mandatory that all food that's still edible has to be donated or given away. Because like how hard is it, take, really? But let me tell you why. Let me tell you. If you don't, if they don't give it away in Italy and France, there's imprisonment, there's hefty fines. So they're being held responsible. Now, what a lot of people don't know is here in Canada, we have what's called, or in, possibly anywhere, excuse me, anywhere in the world that could change is we have the Good Samaritans Act. Now, Good Samaritans Act 94 means that any food that's in still good standing can be donated without liability. And that's how I got all these companies on board. They said, uh -huh. we can't give food away like this because we might get sued. I'm going, tell me about how you're going to get sued. Is this your own insurance company saying that you might get sued? That you, that's why you pay these hefty premiums? Uh, are they the same ones that tell you you have to have marketing dates on everything too? Ah, uh, man, you guys are all one big what? company, eh? So I said, no, no, let's just try it this way. Let's just say you give me the Good Samaritans Act food under the Good Samaritans Act food and you walk away from all liability and I'll take it, the onus from every, every everything. So ever since then, knock on wood, we've done that many meals without any problems. I love it. Well, so then the, this this all points to the uh, the knowing that it's okay. Like it's it's good. You know what I mean? Like we can give food away, and even you know, with my marina, um, which I talked about earlier, when we're starting to wind down for the season because we are only open during the summer. I check all our dates and anything that's soon to be expired, knowing that we're not going to move it off our shelves. I pick a food bank, local or otherwise, usually local because we're up in cottage country and there's significant need up there. Um, and we donate everything to the food banks. And, you know, there is that, and they ask that things are not expired, obviously, but there is, there's a lot of comfort in knowing that, if you are listening and you don't own a business like I do, or, or you're not doing what Jagger's doing, like go through your pantry, go through your cupboards, go through your fridge and look at stuff that you know you're not going to finish. You're, or you're not, not going to finish. You can't donate foods that are open, right? Am I correct in saying that? You can use the app. You can use the app. Okay. We can use the app for things that are open, but if you have items in your home, in your cupboard, maybe you've changed your diet. Maybe you've discovered you have a food sensitivity, something that you can no longer eat, or you're not going to be eating. Donate it, walk it, drive it, Uber it to a food bank. And well, eat, you know, wait, wait, because it looks good on my shelves. It makes my cupboards look full I, because we're hoarders we're maybe, food hoarders maybe one day i'll eat it one day i got years to worry about it no give it away you're never going to eat it give it away <laughs> give that right? shit away it's good for somebody oh, else man. clean clean house right clean mind clean room clean cupboard it's all the same clean clear clear it out well Start i think new. we need to change our thinking right as as north americans we need to change our thinking we 
you don't need to have a lot to be a lot, to feel a lot. You know what I mean? Like we, we surround ourselves with so much and in some weird way it gives us comfort, but let's, let's try to, let's think about having less and giving more, you know what I mean? Rather than keeping more and giving less, I, I would love I'm, I'm hopeful that we start to turn that around. And this is, you know, our, my conversation with you is one awesome way to do that. And um, so to my listeners, if there's one thing that you can share about what you're doing that they can implement in their own lives, what would that one thing be? What would be your one sort of golden nugget of advice? Have a recipe. Meal plan, plan your meals. Look forward to co-creating food together. Everything is brought to the table. We break bread together. Everything, that's why I chose to be a chef because my career, I can relate to anyone in the world. It's something, a job that I will always have every day of my life because someone, let alone myself, has to eat. Mm -hmm. So if I don't want to get bored of food and I want to create, it's always great to open the table to create with others. And if you can sit at a table with family, friends, and whoever it be, strangers, you're able to co-create that dynamic thought process of how you've made, manifested and created a new meal, a new spice blend, something unique because challenge yourself on how to create that next meal. Because a lot of people are complacent. They don't even know how to cook. But if you just took a few minutes to say, I'm going to learn how to make pancakes today. I love pancakes. I used to love, and again, back to not knowing that we were poor. I used to love when my mom would make pancakes for dinner. I was like, why are we having pancakes for dinner? This is such a treat, you know? And, And this is a little bit too, you know, if you are somebody who's listening right now who is struggling because Lord, we all know food is through the roof right now. Um, you know, find a way to frame what's happening in your life right now. If you're struggling with being able to put food on the table for you. I mean, my mom, I'm in awe of her strength because she never let us know, you know, I didn't know that what I was going through as a child was poverty. You know, she always put a spin on it in a way that protected us you know, so that we wouldn't know how bad things were by making making it a little bit of an adventure, you know. And I know it's hard to do when you're in the middle of – we've had to do it with our girls, you know, when we were bankrupt and couldn't put food on the table for our kids, you know, eggs for dinner, b- bagels all the time, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So I do empathize with those of us who are struggling with food insecurity. I think the 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 – beautiful thing is food banks are being heavily supported right now. We've got people like you with your Feed It Forward program. And it, where is your grocery store located? If we have anybody local who's listening to our episode right now, where can they go and shop it, with you and meet you? So the Feed It Forward grocery store should be everywhere, but it is through digitally. Just remember that. It is digitally oh. if you use the app. But the the Feed of Four grocery store is in the Junction, Toronto, Keel and Dundas at 2770 Dundas Street West. Okay, I invite in everyone who notes. wants to be socially responsible. Everyone shops here in the community because what it does, it provides people the accessibility to have 50 to 70 percent off of everything uh, grocery related in the normal stores. It also mm-hmm. gives the program the ability to have funding so that others that come in here that couldn't afford to buy themselves groceries for the day gets them for free. So 50% of the proceeds that are donated go right automatically into wallets for those that are uh, living with food insecurities. The also the, the concept of the story el- helps eliminate tens of thousands of food uh, pro- uh, pounds of food weekly. So it, it's a real win-win scenario. You're shopping for yourself. You're saving 50 to 70% off your groceries, but you're also giving 50% of those proceeds back into the system where it feeds people for free and you're eliminating food waste. That's the concept where everyone should be looking at when it comes to their grocery stores is how to see the end result of all their items. Anything that comes in that front door or that back door, whatever it is, and it's going out, they should see where it ends up because Social responsibility is the future. So how do we find that out? Like, how do we become a food hero in our own neighborhood? Like, 
who do you question ask? everybody you ask manager question what do you do with yes each department has their own before you get to right. the big boy and then they have a mandate and then they have regulations and then they have the big corporate uh, company over their umbrella right. it's just a matter of start it start at the lower end and say hey bakery produce area meats what do you do with your products when they when they expire or when the, or whatever the terms they want to use like what do you do with yeah. it and a lot of them will say oh we throw it away and then you say oh do you take it home like do they give it to the employees we're not allowed so okay i get that part it's crazy but let's donate it find your local sourced area like up there in the northern ontario like like in gravenhurst we have what's called the gap gravenhurst against poverty these are you know i've branched out and i say i we feed afford have branched out to all the networks that are need food hub that have these little food hubs there's food right. deserts everywhere where people don't even have access to these programs and that's why the wow. digital digital age is kind of where it's at but right go to your local grocer and say hey what are you doing with it because if you're not doing anything let us help you find somewhere to to drop it off or get picked up or use the app <laughs> Yeah, I love that. It's free, I'm to, like Yeah, which is wild to me that it's free and that you're doing all of, I I mean, you really are you really are an incredible incredible person and I'm so thankful that you've taken time to sit down and chat with me and, and our our show notes are new are going to be huge. <laughs> and um I really encourage everybody listening to follow Jagger, follow Feed It Forward. Go to their website. Sure, learn. Sorry. Yeah. You know, Go yeah. Ahead. You can follow at Instagram at Chef Jagger Gordon or official Feed It Forward, and uh, go to feeditforward.ca. I, I if anyone's in, you know, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but if anyone needs no. help or anybody wants to jump on board or volunteer or whatever it is, reach out. I love talking to people. I love finding new ideas. Oh, yeah. by the way, if you've lasted this long listening to our conversation and you're you need catering or a private chef experience, I come to your house and I cook for you for a certain way of doing things and you will love it. And this is what funds feed afford. Thank no you. No way. <laughs> I did not yeah. know that. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, okay. Well, on a total. You, you separate... get the chef's experience. That's, that's what I do on a, that's, I'm a moonlighter and at my night times I show up at your space. I give you a molecular gastronomic techniques show of the best foods in the world. It's very that. expensive, but it's the, the proceeds go to right where it deserves. Perfect. I love that. And I'm going to talk to you um, off camera about that because I have some requests for that personally and for my company because I do want to support you in that way. Put my money where sure. my mouth is, but also too, I want to introduce you to, you know, my community up north. I just, I just really hope that everybody listening today, you know, we all know somebody who needs a helping hand right now. Please share this episode. I think it's so powerful. I think it's so important. And you were talking about how you love to cook. And I, I, when you were talking about becoming a chef and why you became a chef, I really, what jumped out at me was that food really is a universal language. It is the one thing that no matter where we come from or what language we speak, we all understand food, how it makes us we feel. We definitely do how it unites us, how it brings us together, how we celebrate life through food. And really, when you think of all those pieces, it just makes sense that nobody should not have enough of it. Totally agree. And the great thing is, is when you have good company amongst the food itself and putting a story behind that food, yeah. because every part of that food element should be a story, make it memorable. Something oh, that uh, either a conversation or the piece, the, the plate as your canvas became something of a topic. There's so much to do out there and half yeah. of it's food related because we spend half our life doing it. Yeah, agreed. Um, so a question I'm going to be asking everybody who is on this season is, um, and I don't like to frame things in regret if you had one thing that you regret. So I'm not going to word it like that, but my question for you, if you could speak to younger Jagger and give him one piece of advice of something to avoid for his future self, what would that one piece of advice be if you could speak to your younger self? Wow. There's so much, I think. Hmm. What would it be? 
Um, you know, start within yourself. Happiness is not brought to others. It's brought to yourself first. I love it. So you start within, you build within, you find your true self and then others will congregate. Other, others will be around you. So you'll be surrounded by the like-minded people. And what I mean by that is for myself, um, just do it yourself for yourself and learn how, how much strength you get from that. Because at this day and age, I still practice that. I always want to help others before I help myself. Right. And it's the hardest thing I still struggle with. So it's, that's my word of advice to everyone is to do the best that you can for yourself. And that's why I'm doing all this at the later age also is right. because not only that I'm able to help myself through others, but that that's what I found out. That's what I'm good at is. Well, apparently help. from just what you've shared here in the short time that we've been chatting, you have been doing that your whole life from being a little kid yeah. in Florida during hurricane, you know, yeah. a young man. I mean, obviously I love speaking with people and meeting people who are paying attention to the signals that their soul is sending them and really live genuinely to their calling. And my friend, you are 100,000% living your soul's calling. And I'm, I am grateful. I know our people who are in need for food and, and, you know, food feeds the soul feeds our brains. We can't live without it. I am so, so, so thankful that you took time out to hang out with us. And I know, um, a lot of my listeners are going to jump on board and support you and, and are going to change their ways so that, um, they can be less food hoarders and food and become food sharers and heroes. So thank you. Thank you. Namaste. What a day this is. Thank you so much for having me. And I look forward to those that are uh, going to reach out to Feed It Forward. Thank you so much. Have a powerful day. You too. And Debbie. to all of you that have survived this long conversation, there's so much that we can do together. We just have to want to do it. Yeah. The only thing that you have to do is leave your comfort zone and want to play in someone else's sandbox. And I got the tools in that sandbox. Let's do it. I love it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Thanks, Jagger. Bye. I'm so grateful you joined in on this conversation. Subscribe where you're listening, leave a comment, connect with us on social media for more and all the links, you can find them in the show notes. We will see you at the next one.